Richard Haas, let's just go down the list of, of, of our former party uh, members who have to, when they're standing on stage, are you proud and do you still support, are you proud of Donald Trump's endorsement and you still support him despite the fact uh, he was he was found liable of sexual assault in New York and the judge said what he actually did was, uh, the commonly used term would be rape, that he raped E. Jean Carroll, that he is charged and, and he's got his own people testifying against him for stealing nuclear secrets, for stealing secrets about invading Iran, stealing secrets about America's weaknesses militarily, uh, that he's accused for having a conspiracy scheme to set up fake electors and defraud the United States government and take away the rights of millions of Americans in seven states to vote and to rig the election. I mean, they're, they're having to ask these questions. And I don't know about you, but one thing that is really I found really disturbing over the past week or so is establishment Republicans that claim to be anti-Trump say, well, I'm anti-Trump, but this latest indictment this on, on stealing the election, they're just going after him for fir the First Amendment. And why aren't they going after Hunter Biden? These people know better. <laughs> They know better, Richard, and and it really, uh, I will say, it it is it's I I have I have despaired over the fact that people that I've known my entire life, adult life, are now playing stupid, pretending this is about the First Amendment and not a conspiracy to set up fake electors to steal seven states away from the rightful winner of the 2020 presidential election. But how does America move forward when you have 40, maybe 45 percent of Americans who support a guy that steals nuclear secrets and tries to rig elections? That's the reason none of us should be sanguine about the future of American democracy three years off from the uh, 250th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. One of our two major parties essentially no longer believes in institutions. It's essentially put, put the emphasis on a person and on causes rather than on principles or institutions. That's, that's something the founders never anticipated. And Can I correct you, Richard? You, yes, said, you said on a person and on causes. There no, there's no cause. Donald Trump, there's no cause for Donald Trump. It's all well, about Donald Trump. It's his personal. Yeah, cult no, no, would be that's a better what I'm word, saying. Be a better word that, than cause. That, that's, that's what's so crazy about this is. It's not even about causes. It's all about this one person and this cult. Right. I don't disagree. Again, it's, it's an angry populist movement. Trump is, is quite clever, quite brilliant in some ways at reading what everyone is uh, feeling angry about. It's the, the politics of grievance. So they're prepared to tear down the temple. You don't hear Mr. Trump, you don't hear other people talk about what they would really put in its place. And you went through all the agencies they would tear down and justice and the rest. They'd also tear down the energy department. That's become another battle, battlefield, if you will. They would strip away all the funding the United States does in renewable energy. Again, they're, they're, there's a kind of, uh, again, tear down the temple. We know what we're against. We're not going to do anything that the, the elitist, that the establishment wants. So this has become a, a truly destructive movement. And if it ever were to succeed, I mean, you're, you, you are confident that he would fail. Uh, I hope you're right. But if, it, it, but if you, it were to be the opposite, if these people were to gain power again, then I, I really do think for, for the only the second time in American history, we would put our, mm -hmm. our collective fate at risk. Well, you know, it, it is it is the risk. It is the risk that he might succeed, whether it's the one percent or 10 percent or 35 percent or 45 percent risk. The, the consequences of losing uh, uh, any candidate losing to Donald Trump and him becoming the next president catastrophic for American democracy if you believe what Donald Trump says. Right. If you believe what Donald Trump says, that, that, that not, not what others say, what Donald Trump says, and what just about everybody that ever worked for him in the first term says. Because most of the people who worked for him in the first term that he selected, that he appointed, say he's not fit to be president of the United States. If you believe them, if you believe Trumpers, if you believe the Trumpers in the indictment, a second Trump term would be devastating yeah. to American democracy. And here we are 
Charlie Sykes, I will admit that uh, even after Donald Trump got elected, um, I thought I thought America would come to its census. I thought mm -hmm. Republicans, my former party, would come to its census. Mm -hmm. I remember Steve Bannon proudly bragging that he was a Leninist. And as a Leninist, he wanted to tear down government, tear down all the institutions that lifted us up, tear down all the institutions that created the American century, tear down all the institutions that fed and freed more people than any other country in the history of mankind. That's what he wanted to do. And I was like, oh, whatever. That's where we are right now. You have Republican mm -hmm. candidates saying they're going to, to abolish the FBI, defund it and abolish it. They're going to tear down the Justice Department. They're going to tear down uh, institutions. They're going to tear down universities. They're going to do all the things that we conservatives uh, supposedly feared uh, during the 1960s from the radicals on the far left. They're, they're actually closer to doing it than the hippies ever were. And, you know, this is not Trump derangement syndrome. This is what they are saying that they want to this do. This is what they say. This is what they have made it very clear. This is Steve Bannon's agenda right now. I think that's a very interesting point when he said, you know, I want to burn it all down, tear it all down. Well, what 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 are our Republicans all around the country running on? Um, and um, I, I don't think that it's too alarmist to say that uh, this would be the end of the of the Department of Justice's independence, and that would be just part of it, because um, you know it's always difficult and dangerous to believe anything that Donald Trump says. But I actually do think that I believe when Donald Trump says that he intends to do this, when he says, "I am your retribution." He means oh, it. Yes. That doesn't mean he's going to accomplish everything, but he will try. And think what that would be like. The Trump 2.0 would be exponentially worse than Trump 1.0. You would not have many of the adults in the room that uh, stop the worst of abuses. And I think this is one of those moments where we need to take him at his word and the rest of his party at his word, because we're at a point now where it's not just Steve Bannon who is ranting, you know, ranting uh, at the moon. Um, he has brought much of the Republican Party itself along with it. The base wants this. And there's no indication that the Republican establishment would be a check against him if he tried to do this in a second term. Zero. They're along for the ride, Charlie. That's the thing, They're again, since, since the latest indictment, so the him. number of, of, of people that had claimed to be anti-Trump all along are saying, well, I'm anti-Trump, but this latest set of right. indictments, while why they're just indicting him for the First Amendment, which again, yeah. you can say what you want to say, Charlie, but let's be very clear to our friends in the Republican establishment that keep trying to to, to lie to the American people and the and, and anyone that they're they're communicating with. Setting up a conspiracy to have fake electors yeah. steal the votes away from millions of millions of millions of Americans in the seven key states like Wisconsin, like, right. you know, other states that Charlie, that's not the First Amendment. That's a no. conspiracy. No, and 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 they're and they're willing to you know to put on the cloak you know looking like it's about principle. It's not about principle. It was a it was a conspiracy to overturn the election. And I think that we do need to go back to specifically what we're talking about. They wanted to, and members of Congress went along with this. The Texas Attorney General went along with this. They would have taken all of the votes of folks like me in the state of Wisconsin and just fraudulently thrown them out just said we're not going to count them in Georgia in Pennsylvania in in in, uh, in places like in in other swing in other swing states and and so to to say that somehow this is this is about the first amendment misses fundamentally and i think this is this is the the dishonesty of the anti anti trump wing of the party which is they will say that they recognize what a threat he poses to american democracy but when push comes to shove they will defend him and they will come up with these disingenuous rationalizations, uh, these every talking, time. and uh, every time, and you know what's going to happen. 
they will rail against him until it, it, it's obvious that he is the nominee, and then they will do what they did back in 2016 and 20 in 2020. They will rally around him. This will be not just Donald Trump's uh, political party. It will be the Steve Bannon political party that aims to tear down, burn down all of these institutions, all of these bulwarks of, of our constitutional system.